We've already done some stuff to this car. I thought it was going to be a real easy diagnosis and fix, but it turns out not to be the case. So I'm going to make a diagnosis video on it. We have here a 2003 Volkswagen Jetta. It's got the solid and reliable 1.9 liter TDI ALH engine in it. And the customer's concern is they have a trouble code. The code that we have there is P1248 or VAG code 17656, start of injection timing regulation control deviation intermittent. And what we've done already is we've set the injection timing. I'll pull up that graph for you. This is a screenshot of the graph of where the timing is right now. And you can see here that this is where it's set at. And it should be up here in the range between the green and the red, uh, somewhere in, the, in that range. And what we've done on this car is we brought it in and it was off the scale to the top. So we adjusted it in there. And then in the course of messing with it, it changed. And I don't remember where it changed to, but it was not in, in range again. So we adjusted it again to put it in range. And, and what has happened is, is it's changed again. Now, I don't know what's changing. Is the belt slipping teeth? I doubt it. Is the pulley on the crankshaft turning? I don't know. Maybe it is. Is the pulley on the camshaft turning? I don't know. Maybe it is. Is the injection pump not capable of adjusting the timing? I don't know. I have a video where I fixed an injection pump timing problem right there. You can click that link and watch that video. But we're going to need to solve this issue because it continually triggers that trouble code. And every time we set the timing in spec, later on, it'll be out of spec again. Now, since I know for a fact one time it was off spec high, and now it's off spec low, I don't think it's a crankshaft pulley turning or the camshaft pulley turning. Those are majorly important things, though. We're going to have to take a look at those things to be sure that isn't the case. Because if those continue to turn, the pistons could end up smacking the valves. Uh, so we definitely need to make sure that doesn't happen. But uh, my gut feeling is, since it was up here once and it's down here once, that probably the injection pump doesn't have the ability to control the timing. So we're going to have to take a look into that, those things. I thought I'd start it up and show an actual timing check procedure. You go to basic settings put go on zero and if you could hear that motor it changed pitch just a little bit that means that when when you go into basic setting zero it sets the timing at the base setting and with no adaptation or no change by the computer to adapt the timing or change the timing for the specific circumstances so um, I'm going to click TDI timing to get the graph and then we have to select which one, and it's this one right here, 599 and greater. And we have the exact same graph down there. So a second test we can do is going to output test. And as soon as we click it, it'll uh, change the timing. And you probably can hear the timing changing. Because what the computer does is it advances it and retards it and advances it and retards it. And so there is some clatter. So this injection pump does seem capable of changing the timing on this car. So maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree. I, I said a moment ago that maybe it, it might be the injection pump not capable of changing the timing. But it obviously does seem to be able to. I'm going to check the graph one more time to see if our uh, test there might have freed something up. But it didn't change anything. Now to change the timing on these vehicles, you remove the upper timing cover. And you can loosen three bolts on there and you change the position of the... Uh, injection pump with reference to the timing belt, you know, obviously in reference to the cam and the crankshaft position. And But we've already done that twice and it's changed since then. So 
is the injection pump turning and advancing the timing some and then sticking in that position? Or is it, is it sticking in the retarded position? Or is our timing changing because of a crankshaft pulley problem or a camshaft pulley problem? Those are all possibilities. Um, I have a video where the crankshaft pulley came loose. I'll reference it up there. And uh, it's entirely possible that this bolt could be loose on the camshaft pulley. Let's take these covers off and then verify those things. Okay, we made some checks here. There was no looseness that would uh, lead me to believe that this, was, this pulley was rotating around the camshaft. And we took the bottom side apart and there is no evidence of it shifting position down there. That would usually make it look rusty and stuff. Um, so we went ahead and pulled the injection pump off. We're going to make some checks at the injection pump itself, see if we find anything. We have it here on the workbench, and we're going to disassemble it some, um, look for the same problem we had in the other video, and we'll even ch pull this off to see if it uh, moves. And if we uh, don't find anything, I have a used injection pump here to put on it. I know for sure that'll fix it. So we have taken this apart and both the O-rings are present on the solenoid. We looked in the hole, didn't see anything wrong there. And then we took the other side apart first and you have inside there a washer that goes inside there. I took it out already. And then there's a spring that goes in there. And then on of course, there's a gasket and this cover right here, and you have a washer inside there also. I think those washers are are just there to prevent the spring from wearing into the piston and the cover, but they might serve a certain shimming purpose, uh, so make sure they're there. Um, but on the, as soon as we took the other side apart, this is the cover for the other side right here, we saw right here there is a chunk of metal. And that's not good. And then we look here at the piston. And it might be hard for you to see, but there is a chunk missing out of it right there. The piston is broke. And I'm trying to move this, and it does not move very free at all. I can move it. Um, we might be able to hone that cylinder out and put a different piston in there and make it work but I'm not sure it's worthwhile since it's damaged. It might be best just to put the used injection pump in there. We'll uh, make a decision on what to do and go from there. Well, we have made the decision that we're just going to uh, replace the injection pump. Okay, Bob has the new injection pump on, and we're going to go in and clear the code and see if it reoccurs. Interesting that we have a quantity adjuster code. Maybe we turned the key on or something while we had the thing apart. Hopefully this new injection pump doesn't have a quantity adjuster problem. Okay. And now we'll go in and we need... We might have a just, um, quantity adjustment problem. That's kind of sort of in spec. And we'll go in and set the timing. This is a 2003. So we select 5 of 99 and greater. And the timing's now in spec. Excellent. Just a quick reminder it's never appropriate to call me for tech advice. Phone calls are reserved for local customers who are bringing me their car. If you have a technical question and want some help, feel free to ask your question in the comments below or send me an email. I'll try and help you as best I can. So we have road test of the car. Everything worked out good. Timing related trouble code did not reoccur. Uh, injection timing on the graph is stable. It's not changing each time we check it. And... We seem to have a fixed car. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything from it, be sure and click the like button. And if you want to contribute to the continued production of these videos, find the donate icon on my website at www.kansascitytdi.com. 
And if you want to watch some more of my videos, there'll be one up here and one down here. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.